But we, we started off with the forming, realizing we needed the Vashtag Survey, we needed help. And then Mary, as Ways and Means Chairman, had this wonderful idea to, to come up with an ongoing project. Which really grew out of your association with the Cookbook in Grady County. Or, but, or okay, right. but it really was almost a pamphlet mm -hmm. compared to this. Our vision grew as we that, that's worked right. on it. I think we need to bring in uh, the cookbook that we did like that had, I think Wema had published before. That also sure. was sort of a guiding light to us. Well, there were several. Mm -hmm. There was, um, of course, Bay, Leaves. Bay Leaves from Panama City. And there was um, Cotton Country Connection, a Cotton Country Collection, collection which from, I think was uh, out in Monroe, Dex. Louisiana. Which, mm -hmm. yeah. So we did kind of borrow from from good books because I think we all agreed early on that a book could be very attractive, but if it were not uh, easy to use, and user really friendly good recipes, we really, really wanted good recipes. What motivates you to give that much of your time to a what was certain to be a community effort? I mean, uh, you know, to benefit the, our community. Well, and, um, for me, probably the challenge was was one thing. Friendship with Carolyn early on was probably the other part <laughs> of this, and and also it it took on a life of its own. We didn't realize we were committed to the ideal, and that to make it happen, it took a year of our time, and and we couldn't let it go. We didn't want to let it go. We we wanted it to be as good as it. This generation was, uh, grew up um, expected to give something back to a community or to those who needed, you know, help. And it was, um, it was a nice group to work with and, um, and it was a worthwhile project. There weren't as many cookbooks on the market either. So you felt like if you did a good cookbook, you would probably find a niche. We also were very aware of, uh, of course, Jimmy Carter's rise to power. <laughs> and we knew that there was going to be a lot of interest in the South, and especially in South Georgia in particular. And we thought that if we made, you know, if we could come up with a book that not only had local interest, but could have regional uh, interest as well, that we would have a project, a product that would be marketable beyond just the people that submitted recipes. All the names that we batted back and forth, I think of some of them were just awful. And then Mary just came up with this great name, which has just been perfect. We were just sitting around in a group, very much like this, at, in my, at my house. And it just, you know, all these names came out. And that one just came out, Pines and Plantations, which really said a lot about Thomas. And then we, you know, got the plantations um, to submit recipes, and that was, that was fun. It was fun to add that part. And then later we added the back, which was the men's recipes, so we kind of made it unique. I think Thomas will. The artwork in there is so good, too. I think Lorna deserves a lot of credit, Lorna McCollum, for the artwork that she did. And Mary Anderson did Mary uh, Anderson some did of the plantations. Also. They sure did. The plantation homes. But Lorna did our did our cover. You know, we once discussed um, taking those cover those uh, divider pages and having a, a series of prints done that we could sell separately. I don't guess we ever pursued that. I think by the time the book was done, we were all pretty pretty much um, exhausted. <laughs> if we can digress a minute, I just saw a word there. The galley sheets they were just very important to us and would not be a part of this of a cookbook now at all? Oh no, no. We talked about how much easier this project would have been had we been had we had computers. But um, we literally did this the hard way. Um, there was a lot of community involvement in this book, not only with people who would donate things to fundraising projects, which we you know we had to have some fundraisers to buy the paper for the book. There'd be tailors uh, oh. typing classes at Thomasville High School volunteered to type the recipes for us. So we had sent out letters soliciting recipes in September of 1974 and by the first of the year the recipe committee had received in my notes over a thousand recipes and of course nine-tenths of them were handwritten and they had to be we we had a format that we had decided on that 
we would use to send, you know, to the printer. So those recipes, those handwritten recipes, had to be taken and, and retyped, rewritten in many instances. And, um, and so the typing classes at Thomasville High School did that for us. And we'd have to mail or UPS back into these cartons of galley sheets. And we'd have to go through and make, make corrections. And um, there were time, many times that um, when the book was getting closer to being completed that we would get 15 or 20 people from the community to come to the Methodist Church Fellowship Hall on a Saturday morning and we would spread out those, give everybody about 20 page, 15 or 20 pages and have them go through and, and um, proofread. You know, we'd, we'd have a sheet that they could refer to that would have spelling of frequently misspelled words like Worcestershire. <laughs> <laughs> and then following the, that, all the proofing was the indexing and that's what you guided and was so. We divided the indexing up and so you never wanted to get a letter that had a lot of recipes. You would like Z over B. Um, <laughs> we did that on Janice's uh, deck. <laughs> Fussing all the way. <laughs> we were determined that everything would be cross-indexed maybe three times by, you know, apple pie would be A for apple, P for pie, and dessert, and then maybe dessert. So um, well, it worked because it's an excellent, excellent index. People have commented on that through the years. Well, the one thing that they've commented to me, and I've, I've just realized what they're talking about is somebody said well it's a really good index if you could read it because <laughs> the print is very small <laughs> and then the book finally came out we all got it together and it finally came out in trying to get christmas of 76. it came out in november um and we had we had had pre-sold the book had taken orders for the book and um and then those who had had purchased the book could pick it up um, out at Box Hall. Louise, Louise Hines had been very supportive throughout, and she had allowed us to have a, a lunch to do a luncheon there for the, I think for the committee. We had been out there several several times, and um, and that more, we had a morning coffee, and people came out and picked up their books and were allowed to to purchase extra ones, I think. It was a huge success. We, we really sure. needed to pre-sell the book because we had no money to pay the publisher. We paid for the paper, so we, we had the paper. But the publisher, Wema Publishing in Memphis, let us uh, print the book and pay them as we sold the books. It was basically a third and a third and a third, I think, January, February, March. But in my notes, I noticed by January, we were already talking about a second printing. So by the time we had gotten through Christmas, we, had, we, were, we knew that we, I mean, we probably had our money for the publisher. And I guess that maybe they knew more than we did. Maybe they, <laughs> maybe they thought we were a good risk. <laughs> First printing was 5,000. <laughs> Which sounded like a lot of good books. <laughs> When the semi backed up into Helen's driveway to unload in her carport, she thought 5,000 was a lot of books, too. <laughs> she um, was chairman of the testing, Helen Cooper, who no longer lives here. And she um, then took on the promotion of the cookbook after the actual book was published. She was chairman of the of marketing. Marketing, marketing uh huh which was a huge job and that's when we had went to market and had all the publicity and a whole another group of volunteers took that on which was so important and they were very dedicated and I, I Wimmer did a good job of promoting the book too they would it, they included it in a um, an assortment if a, a, a retail retailer wanted to to purchase um, maybe they didn't want to buy a dozen pines and plantations but maybe they could buy an assortment which would be four pines and plantations and four or something else and four is, oh, is that my 12 <laughs> four or something else <laughs>
So they did a really good job of helping us market. Because they went all over the country. And I think they also took it to the Dallas market. I don't know if we ever went to, did we ever go I don't think to, they Dallas? Ever went to Dallas? I think the only place we were was Atlanta. Wema also gave us guidance because they had done several very successful cookbooks. And Richard Anderson was our contact there and he gave us lots of good guidance. And he came to Thomasville. And he did. And he came to Thomasville at his expense. Ames is somebody we should mention. I, I'm glad you said yes. that because Ames was always uh, complimentary, patting us on the back. I always said probably gave us far more credit than we deserved <laughs> for that cookbook. Did. And Very she was a wonderful. She was uh, chairman of the board of Ashtay. Wasn't she was she? certainly on the board, and she yeah. stood with us and behind us encouraged and, and us encouraged and, us. Mm -hmm. um, actually, That's everybody true. in Thomasville really encouraged us a lot, and our husbands and children lived through it. So. There used to be a, a they were, we were asked to promote it any time any of us traveled. We were to take a cookbook with us and go to gift shops and show it to people. And I don't know how well that worked, but it... We had a pack. We had a little kit. Yes, it was a kit. That's a little right. marketing it a kit. <laughs>
you know, the basic cook, the beginning cook, as well as the gourmet cook mm -hmm. um, with our recipe. And, and there have been comments through the years, or maybe, oh, why don't you all make it a low fat? It, it just wasn't. It's a comfort <laughs> no, food. No, yeah. It's, no. Not, it's not healthy necessarily, but it, it was just well, tasty. Well, like we good. weren't really, none of us were thinking about that back then, you no, know. No. We weren't so health conscious, no, that's for no. sure. We had lots Absolutely. more fun. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, another thing, talking about the time, I remember there was quite a lengthy dis discussion about how we were going to list the names. We were gonna, were we gonna be listed under our husband's name? That, that was one of my pet <laughs> peeves. Points. I still don't like that I'm in there under Mrs. Tom, Thomas H. Man. But you, but you do have your. Remember how we compromised? Yeah. And, and you, afterwards, and it's have Janine. Janine in print. I remember. I think right. Janine saying. I am not Mrs. Tommy Van when I'm in the kitchen. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly. You have a good wow. memory. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt very strongly about that. You know, that's one of the few things that I like to do and do pretty well. But I think you should tell your story about going to WCTV. So I was sort of the. Um, one that would go and do the food demonstrations. And so I had decided I would do, it was in the fall of the year and I thought people have game. And so I decided to do Lyndon Dunaway's recipe for ducks, dove. duck breast, dove breast, dove breast, stroganoff. And so I thought, well, you know, you need a finished product and then you need one to put together, uh -huh. you know, in front of the camera. And so I thought, well, gosh, I'm gonna have two nine by 13 dishes of these dove breasts, and so I'll just have a dinner party. So, of course, I took it down in my ice chest and hauled all that, you know, paraphernalia down. And so, of course, we pulled the finished product out of the oven, you know, that didn't work anyway on camera. And lo and behold, the people came from the woodworks with their <laughs> plates and spoons. Oh. And so I had, you know, people coming for dinner that night, so I had to hurry home, <laughs> unthaw more, and I had no more dove breasts, so I did the whole dove in order to have this <laughs> dinner party that night. Another interesting um, thing, after the book was published and, and had been sold throughout the United States, or at least the Southeast, we would get calls from people at least I oh, did, would get yes. calls from people yes. and then said, well, I tried, um, I tried the crab and shrimp casserole and mine was so dry. What, <laughs> uh, what, did, you, what did I do wrong? Uh, <laughs> or another time um, I had a, a lemon cheese cake and a layer of cake and uh, somebody called one time and said, my lemon cheese just didn't, my filling just didn't turn out at all, you know, what do you do? So, it was it was funny. Uh, apparently, they thought we were experts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have never gotten a negative uh, reaction to the book. Everybody who's ever and I've had it mentioned all over to me. Um, everybody who's ever opened it and used it really likes it, and I think that's you know amazing because so many cookbooks there's maybe one or two recipes or three that you yeah. really like, but. Um, I've never had anybody say, well, I tried something and it just wasn't, you know. We got some proprietary recipes. I remember Helen Cooper gave us her famous secret recipe for sausage grapes. That's right. And that's just a tradition with a lot of families, I think. And her grandmother's lemon squares, that was a very, and then we, um, I'd love to have a sausage crepe right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to cut recipes, and I remember that the cookbook would be a lot better if my apricot bread was in there. <laughs> we cut not only uh, because of the quality of the recipe, but we cut because of space, because, you know, the book is published in like four-page increments, and I think we had decided on a, a certain number of pages, and... Um, you know, if, if a recipe had gone over into the next four pages, then we would have had to fill up <laughs> the oh. rest of that. So, yeah. um, you know, we just had constraints of space to think okay. about in, in the publishing. So I'm sure it wasn't the quality <laughs> of your apricot bread. Well, well, there's certain things that are just, have, have become family traditions, certain recipes. Um, in fact, I always do the sweet potato souffle, not that my children particularly like it, but I have people that come for Christmas dinner who um, 
you know, Look other for it. relatives who, um, who say, you are going to do that sweet potato recipe, which is Millie Faircloth's uh, recipe. And Janine, I, to this day, I cook a roast. A good roast oh, by the good. Your method. Yeah. Good. So there well, are, and your chicken tetrazzini grapes are my absolute oh, favorite. Oh, I'm trouble, I haven't though. tried those. Oh, they're wonderful. <laughs> oh, they're boy. a lot of trouble. They're a lot of trouble, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll look that up. Oh, you beautiful. have to make the crepes. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, see, I oh, don't. I don't do know that I can make crepes anymore. Yes, you can. Gosh, You'd I haven't surprised. made crepes in so long. The men's recipes, we have a section of men's recipes, and I remember that was fun. Some of them were really funny. Uh, John Turner and his, his rice. rice. Yeah. And there were some fun And uh, Harriet Hawkins' brother's rain chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When they something rain chicken, said every time he cooked it, it rained. Right. <laughs> it's and who rain. was it? Um, was it Hartley Fallbaum's pie or something? Yes. You had yes. a glass of wine and then you had another glass, <laughs> yes. another glass of wine. I could have put wine every night and sometimes I put some in. <laughs> punch, Charlotte Miller's punch that oh, that's you right. used has been just a staple. It's the hospital mm -hmm. tea punch. It's the, you know, that was just, that's a good yeah. recipe. Charlotte's good. It's good. easy to, uh, tr to take the ingredients and transport. Mm -hmm. I don't think at the time any of us would have ever conceived mm -hmm. of this book still being in print in 30 years. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, that we, we said long range, but... <laughs> I don't. I'm Kathy Snook, Development Director for the Vashti Center. Three decades ago, this wonderful committee had such a vision for creating a product that was so desirable that it has stood the test of time and supported children for 30 years. Those of us who work in the midst of these beautiful children do not gauge the success of this project by the numbers of books sold, but rather by the numbers of lives that have been changed and touched and possibly even saved. I hope that the people who worked so hard on this project find a deep and personal satisfaction in knowing that when a child is first taken into custody at Vashti and enters our gates very alone and very afraid, that they are still standing there with open arms 30 years later. To our children who have been abused, who have been neglected, who are sadly in need of a place.